My motto's always been when it's right, it's right. Why wait until the middle of a cold, dark night? Welcome back. Welcome back, Deck Badger Radio. We're uh, a little afternoon delight around here, a little afternoon conversation on religion and things happening in our world. I mentioned yes- uh, that yesterday, August 6th, was the anniversary of the dropping of a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. And there were two bombs that were dropped, um, one on the 6th and one on the 9th of August. And I hadn't remembered that. I didn't even know that. If I hadn't heard a news story today about that, yesterday it never would have crossed my mind Mm -hmm. and and that struck me like it struck me that i don't have any way to access that conversation or think about that now it's the 66th year and i had to look that up right so it's the 66th anniversary so maybe it's the kind of thing that we think well we should be over that but but here's why Hmm. it's hard for me to think well no we should just be in a place where we're over it because much of our own narrative in our country about fear of terrorism, Mm -hmm. much of it is fueled by the idea that these terrorists or these fanaticists could get their hands on something akin to a a, a weapon of mass destruction, Mm -hmm. a nuclear weapon or something, a smart bomb or dumb bomb or whatever they call them, dirty bombs, that they could get their hands on one of those and then it could, they could unleash it in one of our American cities. Yeah. Okay. So that narrative is running around our world pretty actively, seems to me, right? There's people talking about that. There's the fear of that. There was the fear of that with, with the, what's going on in Iraq. There's a fear of that with any safe haven anywhere in the world, right? There's a fear of that with the, um, the designers of nuclear weapon for Pakistan mm-hmm. and then um, leaking that information to others. All of that makes this issue of, like, nuclear weapons being used on cities— part of the narrative of my life. I sure. think about that, mm-hmm. right? Like, not every day or anything, but it comes up. So then it's interesting to me, in light of that, that there is no way for us as the United States to commemorate or recognize that on only two occasions have nuclear weapons been used in war, and it was by us. And it was by us on the in the situation that in uh, July, August of 1945, that Germany had already surrendered, and we were negotiating a surrender from Japan that they hadn't uh, had any interest in, mm-hmm. as I understand the story from history, right? Is that they were not going to surrender, and this was going to keep going. And anytime you bring up anything critical about the use of a nuclear weapon to a certain group of folks, they become increasingly defensive about that being the right thing. Yeah. So I feel like in our culture, while we talk about and worry about the possibility of nuclear weapons being used on civilians inside of a a major American city or any city in in the world, there's not this recognition that that's only been done once and it was by our country. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that is that is a confusing thing to me. It, it's and, weird for us to take the moral high ground in the uh, use and distribution of nuclear weapons when we're the only ones that have actually like killed people with them that have ever used it. I mean, and, and I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be flippant about that no, at all. No. What, what, what I'm bothered by is how flippant it is that we don't even think about that or talk about that. Or have there be anywhere that that can show up even to like and maybe news stories is the way that it happened. Right. Maybe it's like, okay, well, there's been 66 anniversaries since then. What do you want us to do? How should we acknowledge that? But the news story was about how in Japan they have a commemorating of that um, in Hiroshima each year. And they did it this year. And then also talked about the nuclear radiation spill that happened because of the tsunami and earthquake. Oh, right. So it was tight. But they have a custom by which there is a national recognition of them being the victims in Japan of this weaponry or Mm -hmm. them being the recipients of it. Yeah. But then us as the deliverers, we never talk about it nor um, acknowledge that it happened, even though that's the very thing that is the fear that drives the fact that when I went to open a bank account the other day, it's a very complicated process to open a bank account, <laughs> right, because of terrorism laws and, and, right. and money transfer. And when I go to the airport or when I have to think about um, uh, how our government's going to spend its money and is going to in, in be interested in my business, that narrative, there are people who want to get their hands on a nuclear weapon and use it on um, on uh, uh, innocent populations, 
never spins back to say, hey, your country did that. That's interesting to me. Do you think this maybe holds um, special weight with you? Because, Doug, when we were in school, you know, I mean, the, um, you know, with, um, with Kennedy and Cuba and the, you know, Cuban Missile Crisis and whatever, not, you know, early in school, yeah. that was... That was a question, you know, will the bomb be, you know, used yeah. again, you know, the yeah. the threat of uh, nuclear exchange between us and the Soviet Union at that time, you know, was um, was more real yeah. than it is now. Yeah. And so do you think like that's why it's more fresh for you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you've it. had that kind of imprinted, you know, as a child of that. Oh, this was a real threat. Whereas maybe nowadays it's like, oh, that was 66 years ago, that thing that we did, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Maybe I have some childhood. I, I don't I, I wasn't of the generation that had to do bomb. Right. Practicing under my desk, mm-hmm. which, you know, is about as silly as, you know, putting your seatbelt on or putting the things underneath your, your seat in, uh, that airplane. in, in an airplane. Yeah. Right. You know, like, really? So if they're going to drop a nuclear weapon on us, me being under my desk as opposed to sitting upright over the top of my desk is the difference. Right. Like if I think I'm going to be killed by my desk. Yeah, if we're in a plane case. crash, do I really have to worry about my water bottle? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that the thing in the, uh, in the, in the pocket seat yeah. in front of me, because when the plane crashes, I need to be able to get out quickly. Right. Right. And like that half an inch or two inches is going to be the difference. It does right. seem a bit, mm-hmm. uh, a, a bit. So, yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe I have this sense, but, but it also worries me on the religious, on the religious side of this a little bit. Like I don't even hear religious communities having any sense of like, like common remorse for what took place that day. What do you think? And, and then three days later, and that's the part that yeah. really freaks me out, actually. Right. It wasn't just that there was now, because the United States had used firebombing on J- Japanese cities over the course of six months prior to the yeah, uses. This, and hundreds of thousands of people were killed in those, and, and they were really, really devastating. Mm-hmm. But Japan was figuring out a way to tolerate that kind of... And Japan's not a very big country, so when you're... No. You know, it's it's when you're when you're attacking it with that kind of force. So then to drop a bomb on the sixth, mm-hmm. which then s- freaks out, and and they picked the cities that they picked for ultimate effect, not only in the in the 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 casualty toll, mm-hmm. but in the psychological effect. Right. They wanted the the leaders of Japan to be like, this is a game changer, mm-hmm. and didn't give it time for that to soak in before they did another one yeah. on the ninth. And Tokyo's next. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and th- like that double down is a really concerning, concerning thing, and we don't have a way to talk about that. So we do all of our like, look, there might be immoral people that have really bad um, agendas that want something bad to happen to this country, and using nuclear weapons, and there's no recognition that we did that, even on the anniversaries of it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I am struck by the fact that uh, other than, you know, sort of a casual listening to a uh, radio uh, um, uh, news story, I wouldn't even have uh, con- reminded myself of, of that fact. And it feels like, you know, that, that uh, I, sh- I should be more attuned to that. Well, with the fear of, of sounding like a, a raging liberal, um, you know, do you think that because uh, the, our American government, you know, tries to assume the moral high ground mm-hmm. in everything— that this, you know, this is something that, that, you know, since the day it happened that we've justified as being necessary, mm-hmm. that that's now kind of woven into our patriotic sense of self, you know, that it wasn't a bad thing. We yeah. just had to do what we had to do. Oh. And so a lot of lives were saved. A lot of lives were saved. So, you know, but not even a, like like a remorseful sense of we had to do something that we think is was really Harsh. Well, it does seem like something so huge. I mean, that there should be like a, a collective national sense of uh, solemnity ab- right. about it. That my gosh, at a certain point in time, yeah. we felt that we were forced to kill. I don't yeah. know how how many died in both bombs, but uh, yeah, yeah, eighty thousand in the initial uh, bombing and then oh, right. radiation, hundred thousand, maybe two hundred thousand. Yeah, and, and mostly m- mostly civilians. Yeah. And there were some military targets, but that wasn't the the majority of the, there were they didn't have eighty thousand soldiers there. But they didn't drop it on a base, you yeah, know. Right. And and yeah, it's um it is a uh it is a concerning thing. And, and I guess and I, I want I just think we have to we have to talk about that kind of stuff from a, I think a, a a Christian for me, a Christian impulse is hey, we have to acknowledge that, especially because the narrative that we've told is we are at war. Mm-hmm. We are at war with fundamentalist 
um, uh, fanatics, mm -hmm. right? And you can see that in Norway. So there is a war motif that we have kicked into, right? Mm -hmm. There is a war that we're in the midst of. Yep. Just like in World War II, there was a war that we were in the midst of. Mm -hmm. And then in the war in 1945, we chose to use nuclear weapons as a viable option in that war. Mm -hmm. And now we say we're in a war, but if those people, the only way those people would use nuclear weapons in our cities is because they are so evil. Yeah, that's so true. we're motivated to th remember how evil the fanatics are because they would do that mm -hmm. in a war that we have now woken up since 2000, 2001 in the narrative that says now we realize that we're at war. So now we are aggressing, aggressive in the war as you were aggressive in the war, agreeing there's a war. Mm -hmm. Right. So then to say, well, here's how this is how we know how evil those people are, because they would use a nuclear weapon on us. Yeah. That's how bad they are. Do whatever we can to bring the end to them and never saying, well, in a previous war, yeah. we felt justified to you and we didn't find ourselves evil for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we ought to or may like it is a confusing thing, it seems to me. And I, you know, I have a little radio show. So I thought on today we should talk about that. Well, I, I think there definitely should seems that that the lack of a uh, of a of a sadness, mm -hmm. you know, for those 200,000 people that died at, at our hands. I mean, despite, you know, Pearl Harbor and the battles in the Pacific and all of that, but that, that there should be still some resonance, some ripple that, my gosh, as a, as a nation, we are capable of killing massive amount of people. And we did that one time and, yeah. and you know, God and forbid. And instead, like, we know the name of the airplane. We yeah. know the name of the bot, like the name, like they were named Little Boy and Fat Man. Fat Man, Little Boy, like, and like, Ola Gay, yeah. Like, 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 really? Instead of, like, having a narrative that is, let's never have this happen again, what we have are, like, memories of, like, and I've seen those, a, a, I've a, seen that. that a, a hero uh, ising of, of, of those things. Yeah, I've seen the, uh, you know, the, it's, uh, yeah. 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 What it's, are we to do? I, and I don't know. And sometimes I wonder if maybe our religious narratives haven't done enough to help us in our collective psyche to deal with this. It feels like it's a um, it's a it's a failure of of religious imagination. I'm sure we could get calls from the mm -hmm. you know religiously driven anti proliferation folks. Sure. Yes. Um, but it's a uh, it is curious. You, you don't think there's like a little evidence of well we were doing God's work. Oh, I wonder that. Yeah, that, that really worries me, too, that, like, there's such a belief that what we're up to is so righteous as the bright light. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you, now, now you overlay that on, you know, the, our current narratives sure. from our, our <laughs> fanatical enemies and start sounding like that's what they're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we're going to be back here. We're going to lighten it up a little bit with the cripes and the come on. you got to be kidding me here on AM 950 and over there at DougPagetRadio.com. If you want to watch and listen and comment in, we'd love to have you. Thanks a lot. We'll be back here after the break.